I recreated the song Hyena by Travis Scott and noticed a really cool production tip that I want to break down and share with you in this video. So if you're looking to create a vibe or music in the style of Travis Scott, you definitely want to stay tuned and watch to the end. I'm going to start by playing my recreated version and then break down the production and sound design process throughout the video. So let's dive right in. There's no surprise that sampling is not just a main staple of the hip hop music genre, but it's also very much included in many other types of genres of production. When you're incorporating other recorded material into your projects, you're essentially sampling. And so it goes a long way. It lifts the burden of having to recreate things from scratch. But what I want to highlight here that I think is primarily used in this record is reconstructing sampling or using AI to generate stems which can add and create another angle or dimension to your creative workflow. So for instance, so here is the musical sample that they're using in this record. But using tools that some can be free and other resources can, uh, can go deeper into the reconstructing process can be really helpful in approaching a new way of sampling. Using the AI technology in vocalremover.org, which is a free service, you can head over to the splitter mode, upload a file, and the AI will automatically create these stems. Um, so here we have the same sample. But now I wanna go ahead and just remove the drums and the bass, just so that we can focus on the musical elements. Now this can be really beneficial. Why? Because now that you can strip and create stems, well, now you have new ways of looking at sampling. Now you can just take the music, reverse that, as well before you would have to reverse that, the whole entire two track or MP3, and then you're having the artifacts of like the drums and the bass incorporated in there as well. So this is another approach, which the technology that we're currently uh, using right now gives us the ability to do that. Now you don't just have to go with this, you can use many other resources, lala.ai, rx by isotope. There are now more and more uh, services that can add uh, the ability to strip or remove artifacts in songs. Now it's important to know that it's not just all about throwing the sample and loop into your tracks and then calling it a day. We wanna make sure that we're properly warping that sample so that it will adjust to the tempo that we're using in our projects. I'm gonna share with you three simple steps to take when warping any audio to identify the tempo and have it locked into your projects. Now, step one to warping any audio in Ableton Live is find your downbeat. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the first piece of audio you hear or the first kick drum, it's identifying your downbeat. So for me, if I move this playhead marker, which is the beginning of the actual region, the file, I can choose where that downbeat is going to be. Now I can count and locate it, say I want it to be here, or it can be at the very beginning of the file itself. Once I've located the actual downbeat, step two is to simply right click on that playhead and choose bar one, beat one here. What we're essentially telling Ableton Live is, this is where I want to declare the downbeat. Now, as you notice, the downbeat can be anywhere in the file, so right here, we're saying this is downbeat one, bar one, measure one, and so on. So once we've done that, it now automatically calculates what it assumes to be the next bar, beat, and so on. Now the third and final step to warping any audio is go to that first warp marker that's automatically created, that yellow marker, right click, and simply choose warp from here. This will now allocate the timing, and you'll start to see that everything kind of fits within the grid marker, even though the original tempo of the sample, I'm warping it to a new tempo of my project. So here, this number that we see underneath BPM, that's more of a suggestive BPM. So it's like, hey, based on the calculations and where you put the downbeat for bar one, beat one, we think the original sample is somewhere around 92 BPMs. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And yes, there's some looseness here, but that's okay. You can always just go in there and nudge and bring a couple things back to the grid, but I like the looseness. That's totally fine. So that's how you can efficiently warp your audio so that it's ready to be sampled and used in your projects within Ableton Live. And now for the drums, I'm actually gonna implement the same principle. I'm gonna find a drum break here that can be found in Melvin Bliss, Synthetic Substance. Um, it's a pretty famous drum break, but as you can see, it's the beginning opening of this whole song. And I'm really just capturing that initial drum break here. It's a pretty famous drum break. It's been used in a lot of other songs. But I'm implementing the same process. Find a downbeat, set bar one, beat one here, and then warp from here. Once I got that locked in, I'm then going to go ahead and incorporate and fluctuate the little rhythm here by just copying a certain section and looping that over. So here is the overall pattern with the drum loop. Then I'm going to layer that initial drum loop with an extra kick and snare. Now, the reason for that, more than just showing you what I'm doing, the reason for layering this is oftentimes it can help accent certain beats of your loop. I'm using Excellent Audio's XO. Um, you don't necessarily need to have this plugin, but it's what I've been using to really find samples that I'm looking for much easier. So you can see here, it's kind of put together in this nice colorful map. So all my kicks are in red, snares in blue, and so on. Once I find a kick that I want, I'll go ahead, put that, slot that to the kick slot, and layer that with the beat. So here's the kick and snare sample alone. Now, on its own, there's nothing groundbreaking about that kick and snare. So I'm gonna tell you the reason why I added it here. The kick and snare add a great stereo depth that we're gonna hear when we start to process these drums. So I'll group these together and I put it in the drum bus and now we're gonna get that crunch, distorted sound that we can hear in the reference. So I'm gonna start with an amp simulator in Ableton Live. I'm using the stock amp simulator here and I'm dialing in the heavy amp uh, setting and that is where we're gonna get a lot of the soundscape or the sound design and texture for these drums. Make sure to go from output mono to dual so you have a stereo output. Now here's where you see that drum layering come into play. I'm gonna take the EXO drums out and just have the drum loop. See how that extra layer of that kick and snare added some stereo depth? That's what I'm talking about. So that was added after I've put the distortion on the main drum loop, and then I start to add that layer to give the depth that I was looking for. It's all about being strategic with your sound design. I'm not trying to over process this, add an imager or make this wider. I'd rather just do it with another layer of sounds than trying to just manipulate it with uh, like a stereo imaging plugin. All right, once I have that, I'm gonna put an EQ before the distortion to shape the tone a little bit. And we're using a glue compressor for the same, for the principle of now I'm gonna kind of control the dynamics of the layered drums with my loop. I want them to feel cohesive as one loop. So it almost kind of beefs up the volume of the loop and it kind of puts them in good balance. Then we're using another EQ just to shape the overall tone. Now going back to focusing on sampling, slicing those samples can go a long way in incorporating a new pattern as well. So I've taken that drum loop that we've had, I've right clicked on the region itself and I chose to slice to a new MIDI track. That's gonna create a MIDI track with a drum rack loaded with all the samples sliced to my desired setting. So right now I have it set to every transient. So now we can create our own pattern. And you can also incorporate tools like from audio to MIDI. So I can literally just drag that drum loop, put it in here, and it'll go ahead and capture the actual pattern of the drums. I have now this pattern here for the purpose of giving some contrast. Why would I do that? Because in certain sections of the song, we're hearing a new contrast. The, the distorted drums aren't going on throughout the whole thing, and that's something you should probably consider. Instead of having something as heavy distorted drums all the way through, create different sections in your arrangement that don't have that same sonic texture to it, so to give a little bit of contrast so that when we go back to it, it has a greater impact. So here, 
we just have this section with the program drums without the heavy uh, distorted processing. Then we're incorporating an 808 in that section as well. So if you got 808s and they're getting lost in the track, definitely use any type of amp simulator or distortion plugins to get it right back up in the mix. An EQ to shave off some of the high end. If you want more grit, just open up your EQ. Let's take a look at some of the sound design that's going on with the basses that we hear towards the end of the track as it transitions into this cool vamp out. So we have this bass here. Now for this, I'm using Ableton Live's wavetable. We're going for that dark, buzzy type of tone. So initially, I want to start with the oscillator set to a sawtooth. So oscillator one is going to set to a sawtooth. Same thing for oscillator two. And oscillator two is just going to be pitched down or detuned slightly so we get that rhymey kind of Hoover Reese type of bass. And what's going to give it some nice depth is that we open up the unison, turn it on to classic, and crank up about five voices of unison detuning and crank the amount up to your own liking. Now, we want resonance, so we don't want it really bright. So I'm gonna bring the cutoff frequency down a bit and give some more resonance here, some more boost and peak there. And oscillator one is set to a whole octave lower. So we have one oscillator, going an octave lower than the other. So increasing the volume gives it some more growl or some more depth or body and lowering the octave, it just becomes a bit thinner. Now, once I've done that, let's add the grit to that. And that's why I'm using this pedal here by Ableton Live, the pedal plugin. And we're just going for some overdrive. Then we're using our filter for the purpose of creating more of that resonance. Then we're gonna mirror the same exact thing for the bass after that, but we're just gonna set it to one oscillator, it's set to a sawtooth. And this bass here, um, it's gonna have more, it's playing a whole different part. So let me give this another color here, we've got purple and hold shift, click this region so we can see them side by side. So it's a bit softer. It's not gonna be as harsh as the main line. So we're setting it both to, um, we're gonna set the oscillator to a sawtooth. We're gonna bring the cutoff frequency down, a little bit of distortion here, but it's a whole couple octaves higher, right? Sometimes just switching the octaves can really have a dramatic impact on the sound design of your sounds and then putting a, the reverb directly onto the sound. And then we have another uh, instrument here, which I'm using the analog to just create this nice creeping synth that just kind of blends its way in. So that synth is bright, so I'm starting off with a sawtooth on oscillator one, sawtooth oscillator two, just doing some slight detuning, that's it. And I'm gonna automate the volume, so show automation, so that it just creeps in right about halfway of that performance. So the main takeaway is having a new approach to sampling. Although incorporating recordings into your project is nothing new, but maybe utilizing some tools that allow you to strip out some of the stems so you can take artifacts out, maybe add artifacts in and see what approach that does to your creative workflow could be very helpful. So oftentimes on this channel, I would often recreate popular songs that are charting on the radio and deconstruct them, giving you helpful advice to take your next step with your music production. Well, I wanna give you access to some of those sessions so that you can have uh, ways to just grow, watch some of the videos to follow along and help you take your next step forward. And on top of that, I also wanna give you a free sample pack, 100% royalty free that you can use, as well as a free VST plugin and some extra goodies and templates that and vocal chains and all these things that could be really helpful for your music production skill set. So all that is absolutely yours free. Just click the link below in the description box or visit beatacademy.com slash pack to access this bundle of goodies today. I wanna to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch. 
be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with what's coming on board on this channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.